Three. Welcome back to Spy Fox on Hold the Mustard, everybody. We looks like we are now in a new world. We were in the uh, peninsula, now we're in the Caribbean Sea, matey. Oh boy, we can make Jack Sparrow references. <laughs> oh, this is new music. Definitely have not had this music before. Oh hey, everybody just has tomatoes in their hand to begin with. That's gonna spice up the level a little bit. That's good. Cool. That's that's what we needed. We needed a little bit of lift. Spy Fox all the Buster. Why is the ketchup gone? Okay, uh, uh, who hasn't made that reference? Okay, yeah, it looks like fewer enemies, but they got tomatoes, so if you want to get those extra points. Don't you want the power up? No, I think I'm good. Well, all right. If if we insist. Homing missiles. Oh no! Don't let the tomatoes get drowned. You know, I'm starting to think I probably should have not gone after the power up because now I'm getting overrun by tomato bots. This is terrible. Man, the new parts of the Caribbean movie looks very different. <laughs> because Johnny Depp will not... Ow! Okay. I don't know how the physics on that work, but that was interesting. <laughs> because Disney couldn't get Jack's, uh, Johnny Depp to come back from the new Pirates movie, <laughs> they're like, all right, well, we've got to, like, make it different so that people will still do... I know, we'll make it sci-fi! It's like, what? <laughs> it's the... When we say Pirates of the Caribbean, we don't mean, like, you know, yar, har, ho, like pirates. We mean, like... People who pirate illegal music and video games. <laughs> who live in the Caribbean. It's like, this is literally one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> I don't know. Pirates of the Caribbean it being about, like, internet piracy. I feel like that could be a good, like, three-minute YouTube video skit. It's not an actual movie with, like, a multi-billion dollar budget. Then again, though, I've only ever seen the first Pirates movie. And even that, I'm like, this is a little weird. Because I'm like, okay, so they, they made a movie based off of an amusement park ride. Okay, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, yeah. Now we're getting the old music again. Okay, I am glad that the levels are at least changing a bit. It's still just blastable with too many enemies. But at least now we can get extra points for collecting the tomatoes. I think if you take out all the enemies on screen before the new ones can spawn in, it should trigger an early end of level sequence. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like this is like the only junior arcade game that doesn't have a built-in level editor. Even Cheese Chase had a built-in level editor. Or maybe Lost in maybe Jam Sam Lost and Found didn't have it. Maybe Water Worries didn't have it, but, like, what would you even do with the Water Worries custom level editor? There's one level that you have to play a hundred times. Just like this time, I need to hit two worm doodles. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if there was a level editor what you could really do. It's like, which color ships do you want to spawn in? Uh, is there a difference? No, but they look different. <laughs> Great. S-tier level editor. Some level editors are great, and others are not. One of the most disappointing level editors I've ever seen was the Diddy Kong Racing DS uh, course creator. Where I'm like, you could create your own Diddy Kong Racing courses, this is going to be amazing. Then I'm like, oh, you literally just draw a shape. They kind of make a level for you, I and it's really fuel. boring. 
and it's always sky themed. You know what had a phenomenal level editor though? Lego Stunt Rally. Everything they did in the game you could make in the level editor. And there was so much possibilities. <laughs> if only the game itself had better gameplay. <laughs> Still fun though. Oh man, if Lego Racers had a level editor, that actually was good. Oh, that would have been legendary. Uh-oh, better not crash into the yachts. That, t that giant tomato just dropped on the yacht party. I wonder if it's the same yacht party as the one in Spy Fox Drive Zero. You know, for continuity's sake. The SS Deadweight. I probably fell on the weasel doorman's head. But you know what? Th that's fine. I don't think anyone's too upset about that. Most of the junior arcades have at least a level editor. You rarely can do everything in the level editor that the actual levels had. I think the only one where you could was Sockworks. And even then, you couldn't choose the background. Ouch. Spy Fox, the spy messes are not cheap to remake. Don't worry, Quack, I won't run out of health. You've said that before, Spy Fox, but you absolutely have in the past. That was then, and this is now. Quack, alright. I took a month and a half vacation in order to learn how to drive this more accurately. Then why are you still crashing into spaceships? <laughs> They're kind of hard to avoid. Spy Fox, you literally just crashed into that pirate ship. <laughs> Tell you what, how about I save the world and you just make backup spy messes in case we need them? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> By Fox, all of this is going on taxpayer money. So if you drive badly, you have to increase taxes on the, on the working man. That's not going to make you popular with the Americans. Good thing I'm from Britain. Actually, no, wait, I don't think Spy Fox is from Britain. Even though he's based off of 007, he definitely is British. Because he gets the, the cookie medal from the president in Dry Cereal. And the president is definitely supposed to be Bull, Cl Bull Clinton. <laughs> we couldn't save all the tomatoes. But we saved most of them. Ha <laughs> yes, when I, when I think of the Caribbean, I immediately think of tomatoes. That's definitely a thing. I know there's a special UK version of Dry Cereal where they talk in completely different accents. And, like, Spy Fox actually sounds like James Bond. Shaken but not stirred, money, Monkey Penny. I think my personal favorite, though, is the, the UK version of Puppet Enters the Race. Where they, like, just change the name. Even though that's both English-speaking nations, they change the names of, like, a bunch of stuff. And not just like, oh yeah, it's like petrol instead of gasoline. It's like, no, we're changing the name of like Mr. Fenderbender. I, I th Mr. Fenderbender has a ridiculous name in, in the UK. I think it's like Mr. Bumper or like Bumper Smacker or something. Ow ouch! <laughs> it was weird. Hi, Mr. Bumper Thumper. <laughs> I do like Puppet's uh, British voice, though. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like British children sound better than, like, American children. Exhibit A. The TV show Angelina Ballerina. 
That sure would be insufferable if they didn't have British accents. Okay. How did you get that low down? No matter. You've been vaporized. Oh, this is weird. Like, we're getting some new music. I'm wondering if the game will just always be this monotonous, or if it'll eventually get, like, really difficult. Because, like, Cheese Chase was pretty simple for most of it, and then, like, got a horrible difficulty spike when you're on, like, the sky levels. Or Balloonorama when you enter the cave. <laughs> Alright, Balloonorama is a pretty easy game. You enter the cave, it's just like, what is happening? Why are there pigs trying to drop bowling balls on my head? Why do the balloons regenerate over time? Oh yeah, the exploding cakes! <laughs> Even after mentally knowing that the cakes explode, I still was like, it looks like power-up must touch. No, don't do it! Aw, oh, did I not get all the tomatoes? Oh, I think I dropped one, yeah. The Caribbean Sea, matey. Oi, Spy Fox, where can I find the Black Pearl? I think you're in the wrong genre there. <laughs> it was literally a The Cake is a Lie moment, yes. In Spy Fox Cheese Chase, there are, like, snow levels where there are cakes. And the cakes look like power-ups. Where it's like, oh yeah, if you pick them up, you'll get extra points. No, they literally blow you up if you touch them. And I don't think they were supposed to be booby-trapped. I think it's literally just, like... Oh yeah, they hard-coded it to be, like, solid rock, and you blow up if you hit solid rock. Somewhere over the Caribbean Sea. Ouch! Spy Fox, did you just hit the fuel station? You know what? I don't really appreciate the... <laughs> I don't appreciate the silent judgment, Professor Quack. I could fly the mess. I'd be pretty good at it. I did invent it, after all. I don't think so. It's Spy Fox hold the mustard, not Professor Quack hold the mustard. Maybe we could get a sequel someday. <laughs> sure, Quack. <laughs> I'm sure the audience is just dying to get Spy Fox Cheese Chase 2, like 20 years after its initial release. It's actually closer to, like, 25. <laughs> Whatever. They just don't make quality games like this anymore. Honestly, some of my favorite parts of Humongous Entertainment games, though, are like the little mini games. Pump and Fatty Bear's activity pack, anybody? The ultimate, the ultimate challenge on my channel would be if I ever try to, like, full clear circus storming. I'm not sure if that's even going to be possible. <laughs> Bear storming alone, I think, destroyed a part of my soul to, dis to be, and that's where you can save after every level. You can't save after every level in circus storming, and it's harder. Uh-oh! Spy Fox, if you, <laughs> if you just breathe on this the wrong way, it's going to blow up. I'm okay, Quack. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Then stop crashing into spaceships, Spy Fox. <laughs> See? I beat the level, didn't I? Yeah, but now we've got to repair it. This could cost some money. <laughs> That's interesting, but I sure don't care. <laughs> Is it just me, or are you getting sassier <laughs> as the years go by, Spy Fox? It's not just you. I wonder what the power-up could be. There be something good. This is really far down, so it better be something good. 
that literally just an extra life? It's just an extra life! Wonderful. And now I'm very far behind on defeating all of these guys. Ouch! Spy Fox, did you crash into the spaceship again? I found a new spy mess free of charge. Spy Fox, there's no such thing as a free spy mess. Somebody had to pay for it and put it there. <laughs> and that somebody was me. <laughs> well, I thank you for your generosity, Quack, and your understanding if I blow up the spy mess. <laughs> At Spy Fox's next like performance review, Professor Quack brings a lot of notes to share with the uh, members of the Spy Board. <laughs> it's like, Spy Fox, I really don't think you ever got a driver's license. <laughs> it's the only explanation. <laughs> Spy Fox is like arguing why he should be given a raise. Quack's like, I think you should have to take the driving test again, personally. <laughs> That is a good question, Quack. Why did you put the extra spy mess in the depths of the ocean? So the enemies wouldn't find it, duh. Well, okay, but I had to go pretty far out of my way to grab it. I'll need some fuel. <laughs> okay, then just drive through the fuel barrier. Oh, doggone it, there's more! I thought that was gonna be the end. <laughs> Time you think you just got him, there's there's more that spawn. How horribly unfair! <laughs> what would it? I don't know. I mean, Spy Fox literally just announces he's a spy to everyone he meets, so presumably there's not a very strong spy protocol that needs to be followed. That or Fox's first name is Spy. But come on, who wouldn't believe a detail like that? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I actually think his first name is Canonical Spy. But it's funnier to, to think he just announces, like, I am a spy to everybody he meets. They're like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So, can I borrow your megaphone? Only if you sell me cookies. <laughs> Lost Luggage was not that bad, except for the last level. But the last level was literally designed to be unbeatable. Because they didn't want to program in, like, a you beat the everything screen. So they're like, uh, let's just make the last level impossible. So I don't really count that. I've also heard that level's not hard, it's just like you need to reset hundreds of times to get it. The actual hardest a game is eggs away. It's so boring to play through. Also, I'm going to point out, things from space gets pretty brutal after you beat the first couple levels. It does not help that you have to use mouse controls. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know what the last level of this is. So, like, we could be on the last world, but probably not. This would be very anticlimactic if it finished here. X dude, what is up? Welcome to the stream. We're just hanging out in the Pirates of the Caribbean, shooting spaceships and picking up tomatoes. Just a pretty average Friday night for colorful already. <laughs> no, like, but Circus Stormin', man. Circus Stormin', I'm not... Has anyone actually reached the end of the game of Circus Stormin'? Because I have, I have not found any videos of people going beyond, like, the third level of like, the hardest difficulty. <laughs> I bet someone has. I just haven't seen video footage of it. Caribbean Sea! Okay. 
We're on level 8. Will this be the last level of the Caribbean? Or will there be more after this? There will probably be another quote-unquote boss level at the end. Where it's like, shoot the antenna. Okay, done. <laughs> I can still take damage while invincible. Well, does by Fox. Well, forgive me, but the word invincible kind of has a special meaning. <laughs> I've got to say, collecting that didn't really seem worth it. <laughs> You're telling me... <laughs> Quack, there is more to life than saving money at SpyCore. I'm in charge of the finances, all right, SpyFox? I'm going to have to explain to the finance department why I had to spend millions of dollars building you, like, new spy messes. <laughs> Just tell them it was for all for the purposes of making a great kids game. Yeah, they'll definitely understand that, SpyFox. SpyFox, <laughs> I'm warning you. <laughs> oh, chillax. We still have five more spy messes ready to go. Those are supposed to be, like, a last-ditch effort in case things go really badly. Well, things are going pretty badly. <laughs> they're, they're kind of preventable, though, Spy Fox. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the Nuggets game. That's another one that has a lot of levels. I mean, the world can live without tomatoes, though. I'll need some fuel. Oh, that's nice. Spybox, please don't run out of gas. I literally put fuel recharge stations in the levels, specifically to make sure you don't run out of gas. <laughs> you could have put in more than one. That would cost more money. <laughs> I can't wait to see what King Conglomerate's expenses report is going to be at his uh, company for the upcoming quarter. The, C the CFO is just like, so let me get this straight. You spent like $500 trillion building like 800 spaceships to steal tomatoes and they all got destroyed? How is that related to mustard? <laughs> just trust me. Trust me, bro. Oh, here we go. Florida Swamplands! Oh, okay. You know the Florida Swamplands are going to be the best world in the game. <laughs> We're going to meet Florida Man next time on Spy Fox Hold the Mustard. <laughs> wow. No boss level. I'm surprised. Normally you've got some kind of like a shoot it a hundred times before the next level, but guess not. All right. That's going to do it for Spy Fox and, the, and Hold the Mustard. So Sunday we'll be uh, going to Kingdom Hearts Recoded again, and then Monday we'll be playing game nine of Backyard Baseball, and I guess then we're going to Florida. So cool. That'll be interesting. Thanks for joining in, everybody. I wish you all a fantastic rest of your night, and God bless everyone.